All right, welcome to another episode of the J Situation Podcast. Uh, I'm here with Mr. Jimmy Bell from Silencer Co. Hello, glad to be here. So um, we're here at the, I guess, the second day of the NRA annual meetings in Indianapolis. Um, yeah, how you doing, man? Outstanding. I'm glad to be here. A lot of energy at the show. A lot of attendees. Get to see all my friends. That's the cool thing about the industry shows. You see all your buddies. You get to run yeah. with all your friends and catch up. It's been crazy. I, I, you know, I saw Chuck Liddell from the UFC yesterday. Speaking of, speaking of my buddies, yeah, I mean a lot. <laughs> um, so you're with Silencer Co. How how long have you been at Silencer Co.? I came on board with Silencer Co. in fall of 2016. So okay. going, going on three years. Awesome, but like, uh, I guess what's some of your background like before that? What, what were you, what were well, you doing? Before that, I, I worked in a for a technology company that provided services to the to the oil field. Okay. Uh, so we, we're an oil field services provider, and I was a training planner before this job. I okay. managed about 14 learning facilities that were spread from El Paso to Nova Scotia. And they had anywhere from two to eight classrooms, and anywhere from you know two to 20 employees and specifically what I did was forecast training, you know, pay for the training and, and, you know, handle all the logistics and then most importantly record that training. Cool. And then, you know, run reports for professional development and uh, just keep keeping folks trained, you know, personal and professional development has always been a passion of mine and uh, that training planner job was a, a good role for me. I really enjoyed it and it translated well to sales, especially in the NFA industry because this stuff everybody wants it we just need to train people on how to get it we train folks on how the product moves from the manufacturer through the sales channel to the end user how to navigate the regulatory burdens and right and then train them you know which product they might need for their purpose okay so gosh um so what i guess what kind of got you into silencers well i was in the military for eight years okay and my first introduction to silencers was around 2003 or so. I actually grew up uh, with my grandpa. I lived with him until I was about 10. Okay. And he was a fanatic. He's a retired Marine, Master Gunnery Sergeant, and loved guns. And he may or may not have done a little experimenting out there on the ranch. Sure, allegedly, yeah. And it was <laughs> it was just kind of really fascinating and cool as a kid, you know, and then literally just being a cold war baby watching all the all the cool movies with all the sub guns and just silenced guns and then you know in the military obviously getting to get my hands on some real stuff and yeah some knight's armament and uh getting to use them and, and really kind of learning about the advantages of it and then uh then after the military uh with varmint hunting and things like that you know very very little interaction i did i was around them a little bit yeah but uh, not not a whole lot um just kind of Kind of jumped into the to the deep end of the swimming pool, really going from from the oil field to to Silencer Co., the largest Absol- silencer company. Yeah, you know that's um, it's it's inter- interesting that you bring that up. You you kind of did jump into the deep end. I mean, you know, so I guess I don't own any Silencer Co. cans for some reason. Like you know, I've it's weird because I've <laughs> I've been around silencers now for over a decade, and I don't own any Silencer Co. cans. But I I do remember. The inception of Silencer Co. I remember when the Sparrow 22 came out with the clamshells, and that it was so easy to clean. It was the first time anyone did that. It was a monocore, pretty simple monocore, symmetric core, um, had the clamshells on it that fit into the outer tube. You could take that outer tube off no matter what, how dirty it was, and those clamshells would pop right off. It was in a, a very innovative design. And um, since then, since Silencer Co. made that. It's that company is, gosh, I remember that first part, you guys had what one product. One and product. since then it became a force in the industry, especially after, you know, the changes of at advanced armament and everything in Georgia. Um, I mean, it's amazing. It is amazing. I am honestly honored to work for this company. I'm, I'm really proud to work for Silencer Co. And a big part of that is because of what they've done in the industry, not just in, through innovation, product innovation, always, always leading the fight with product innovation. Every new product we release is first in class in almost every category. And not just that, but just the, the responsibility Silencer Co. has taken to educate consumers, to grow the industry, 
this company has spent an incredible amount of money educating the consumer and lobbying for for our rights as as gun owners which that costs money that takes time that takes yeah. people that you, it takes sure. putting yourself out there and there's also risk associated with that right and you know I'm, I'm just proud to work for a company that you know puts the money where their mouth is and really waves the flag and, you know really yeah um i it's interesting like i was looking at some of some of the pro you know speaking about the innovative products i noticed lately some of the products seem to be disappearing are some like um can you talk about like maybe some of the models that are going away and maybe sure. what models are sort of superseding them sure in the line we're trying to streamline the product line you know we're every year we're, we're always introducing something sometimes we have two or three silencers a year that come out uh -huh. and so again the, the logic is to streamline the product line and if there's just simply a in that product category if there's just a ser superior product that's just totally blowing it out of the water you know it's quieter shorter lighter and you know why not you know give, yeah. give the customers what they want so that the octane series of silencers yes is going away okay really so the old the evolution of the old trident from swr yes and the hems yes you got the octane 9 octane 45 yep. hd and then the and then the octane 45k the octane 45k yeah. so that's going away that line is uh, is going away okay the uh and we're also dropping the two rim fire, uh, the Warlock, which is a cool product. Wow, it's the Warlock's ounce, going away. Three ounce silencer. And that that thing's quiet, so dang quiet. It is super quiet. It was the quietest 22 silencer for a long time. Yeah, until, that's the original Joe Gaddini it's, technology. It, it's that's crazy. It's a cool cooked together baffle assembly. Yeah. The Warlock's going away. And the Spectre, which the Spectre's basically a... a that's old SWR can, yeah. The steel version of the, of the Warlock. Yeah. Um, so that those those two... Those are all going away. Are going away, yep. And basically, we released the Switchback. Okay. This year, the Switchback yeah. 22. It's a modular silencer. Right. Titanium and steel construction, full auto rated up to five seven. Um, you know, you can you can reduce it down to two and a half inch, three ounce uh, silencer that's hearing safe with 22 long rifle or on on a rifle, and and it's and it's it's the quietest 22 silencer on the market right now by by a long shot. And the innovation there is that that last baffle stack on the modular portion you can actually take that baffle stack around turn the baffle stack around and they turn into diffusers and if you're shooting subsonic ammunition the diffusers actually do a better job at slowing the gases down and cooling them off yeah i remember you you guys talking about that when you launched it i guess with the subsonic 22 ammo the pressures are so low that some of the turbulence that's created and some of the vortices that are created with high velocity flow you just can't get that with you may be hitting a tripping point in the flow where it's, it's below this critical velocity number and in that the diffuser geometry just is more efficient it maybe does a better job yep yeah i'm not very, an engineer i sell stuff but uh, i was really impressed when our engineers told me all that i'm like yeah. wow you guys are awesome and i don't know if they found it out by accident oh. and <laughs> they but it works and it's cool and it is extraordinarily quiet i mean anyone that shoots it it's it's just fun rimfire is fun to shoot suppressed rimfire is just an absolute blast i think all of us that's what we shoot the most of i mean it's the most fun i have three yeah. kids so that's definitely what i shoot the most of we spend a lot of a lot of time out uh, playing with switchback and playing yeah with i mean it's, it's cheap uh it's cheap fun you you have that initial investment of you know the 200 dollars tax stamp and then the, the price of the silencer but after that that thing's gonna last a lifetime, and then you have a brick of you can buy you know five thousand rounds of twenty two ammo at Walmart. It's enjoyable, and you know it's it's a good not only is it a good training aid, but I mean you could actually you know hunt with it if you had to. Yeah. Twenty I mean, twos are are wonderful. I have several of them, obviously, but the kids and I are really enjoying our our, our Smith and Wesson fifteen twenty twos right now. We've got a couple of them, and they're just fun to go out. Yeah, it's and, definitely the best and it's enjoy the, ourselves. Yeah, it's the best way to get into silencers. 22 People silencers. smile when they shoot yeah. a silenced 22. Yeah, man. The, that's the first thing. First reaction you get is smile. I um my first silencer was a 9mm silencer silencer and um it was quiet. It sounded like a pneumatic nail gun, you know, um but when I got a 22 can, I was like, "Oh, uh, I, okay. That's where it's uh, now, at. now I see." Um are there like what are what are some things you so you've been almost three years now at the company, like what are some things you've seen during your time at Sonser Co. that you would like folks to know that maybe they don't know about the company? Is there anything like perception wise you want, you would want to clear up or is there like anything cool that maybe, you know, you want to share with folks? Well, I know that it's a true American dream type of company. Two guys had a vision 
they bought a machine and literally built the Sparrow. And then they went out and sold that thing and built the largest silencer company in the industry. And, and that's how it started. So that, that's an incredible, you know, you know just the, the beginning of it. Um, I think a lot of folks know just how much we innovate and how much we really put ourselves out there. I, I don't think folks really understand how, how small the company is. So at, at its biggest, you know, we had 450 people or so. Okay. That's still a small company, right? The company I came from before this, we had 25,000 employees, you know, all over the, it's an international corporation. So, I mean, even the biggest silencer company is still a small company. And people say, well, y'all have a lot of the corporate type issues. It, it's still a small company. You know, you walk in there and there's a lot of, and, and, and in West Valley, Utah, where it's at, it's a fairly tight knit community. When you're in that office, I mean, these, these folks know each other. They grew up with each other. They're That's neighbors. Cool. So it has a very hardcore, just blue collar feel to it. And it, you know, it's a 70,000 square foot machine shop. I mean, you walk in there, it's a production facility. That's and awesome. It, it is awesome. You know, it's not just a bunch of sales guys and marketing guys hanging out. I mean, we we're a vertically integrated company, one of the few in the, in the country. Uh, you know, historically, they've tried really hard to, to source materials from America, which costs a lot of money. And there's some of the materials we can't always source in, in America, but mm -hmm. they, it's just, it's a true American brand. It's a true, it represents the ideals that we, you know, respect, uh, you know, have a dream, put, mix it with your labor and your time and create something awesome that's useful for a lot of people and they're willing to, to give you money for that product or service. That's got to feel good. It does yeah. feel good. Um, and maybe speaking to the, we had a, the summer promo, you know, literally yeah. last year we had the most popular promotion in the history of silencers. And for we, those of you, or again, for those of the listeners who don't know, can you explain kind of what the deal was? Yeah, we had a, basically it was a buy one, get one promotion. That's you right. Spent okay. Over $700 on a serialized product. You could get, you know, these three silencers for free. And if you spent over $800 on a serialized product, you could get, you know, these, this group of silencers for free. Well, the, it, we only ran it for 30 days. And in those 30 days, we sold over 12,000 silencers. Made in, a little bit of a backlog. In 30 days, <laughs> we sold over 12,000 silencers. Now, this was good for the end user because, you know, we don't sell directly to the end user. We right. do a two-step distribution process. Right. So this... It helped, you know, help the dealers that had inventory sitting on their shelves. Historically, summer's a slow season. The year before that, we had done the $200 rebate, which cost us well over a million dollars. We issued out well over a million dollars in rebates. Wow. And that's literally us giving the industry a million dollars to jumpstart the industry. Summertime slow. So last summer, we did, we did the buy one, get one. Overshot what we thought we would sell it by, how many we thought we would sell by, you know, 65, 70%. And, and folks still... Initially, we said, hey, we're going to get these out in four months. And, and you know, that ended, you know, July 15th. And here we are. We're still working on that. And so we're, yeah. we're working through that. And it's really, if, if folks need to know anything, just people are working very hard to, to, to get this done. You know, we, you know we're, we're, we're sending out those summer promo silencers. They're shipping to the dealers where the end users uh, registered their serialized product that they purchased. And, you know, those products are showing up of the 12,000, you know, we've shipped nearly half. Uh, we've made a public commitment to have all of them out by July uh, 29th cool. or, or June 29th. And, you know, we're just trying to clearly communicate that message. Thank you for your support. We're sorry that <laughs> we have not fulfilled our obligation. And we're literally working as hard as we possibly can every day to, to meet the customer's expectations. I, I mean, I'm, I'm, sure, I'm sure they appreciate you guys I, I think I'm, sh I'm sure they appreciate the position that you're in, you know, that, that you offer that. They appreciate the generosity of it, of course, because they're consumers. Um, and I, I, they, I'm sure they appreciate you addressing it. Um, you know, yeah, I'm on, you know, I'm, I, I frequent the silencer forums and gun forums online and things like that, Reddit. And there's always people like, man, well, you know, I'm still waiting for the, the silencer co promo. And they got like, you know, they'll make a meme with like a skeleton waiting there, it's, which is hilarious. And but, honestly, it's, it is hilarious. Yeah. And, and it's true. <laughs> And funny, I mean, and they have every, absolutely every right to be frustrated. Yeah. You know, here at NRA, at least a handful of people have come up to me and expressed their frustration. And my answer is always the same. It's like, you have every reason to be frustrated. You have every yeah. right to feel that way. I'm sorry. And the um, NFA game is a waiting game too. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, I, it, unfortunately, the, 
the current state of the laws that for quite some time now, um, it's become so popular. I remember when Form 4s were, were taking three months. I mean, that was a long time ago. But now you're, you know, it's a nine-month thing. Nine months, 12 months sometimes. I just got four silencers back last month, and it was just over 11 months. This yeah, just over that's about, months. I think I, I got one back a couple weeks ago. It felt like, I think it was 10 or 11. I think it was 11 to maybe 10 and a half months. And that, and that was an individual transfer, not of a trust. I mean, when you put trust paperwork, I feel like it takes a little longer. I just don't know. But, um, yeah, uh, well... Moving back into, and, and I know you're in sales, so you may you may not see a lot of the product development stuff. I don't know how much they share with you what you see, but I was going to ask, like, testing. Mm -hmm. When you guys test for stuff, obviously some, some of your products, there's more things to worry about. Like when you have a 22 silencer, you're not going to have to worry about certain things you're going to have to worry about with a rifle silencer, for example. Well, but so our 22 like, silencers are all full auto rated up to 5.7. That's right. So we... But the heat and stuff, for example, so, I mean, there's things that I think about when I when I come up with a, li uh, a wish list in my mind or a, a checklist in my mind that I would think that you would have to look at, I would think of durability, integrity, sound, on-off cycles on a mount, repeatability and accuracy. Is there something I'm missing that you guys do too, or is like have I pretty much covered the... Yeah, size, weight, so we're going for length, we're going for yeah. weight, obviously sound reduction, durability, repeatability, mm -hmm. um, and, and, and durability. Okay, cool. Um, when you guys are coming up with your new products, you know, you mentioned the... This, and we'll go back to testing a little bit later, but I was gonna ask about like, Maybe the switchback is maybe a good example of this. You did mention, you know, the engineers that came up with that. They, they reversed the section, um, uh, on, you know, one of the sections of the silencer and it was quieter and, you know, there's, there's physics behind that and why that occurs. You mentioned maybe they just found out by accident, maybe they didn't. I wonder, do they use computer modeling to measure the flow ever? Um, how, are they, how are they doing oh, their, their engineering? It's really advanced. So, okay. like I said, Sandra Co is, it's a large facility. I mean, there's literally professional accredited engineers sitting in an R&D laboratory, okay. like literally a laboratory, and you go in there and it's nerd heaven. I mean, they, they got, or gun nerd heaven. I mean, they got, you know, guns, <laughs> Same thing. Gun store part everywhere and, you know, computers set up and, they, and they, you know, they're doing their modeling and then they make their predictions. Okay. You know, baffle geometry, that's why the Omega is king, yeah. is the baffle geometry. You know, we, we figured it out several years ago. Like, hey, you know, the, the geometry with your baffles has just as much to do with sound reduction as the type of material and, uh, you know, how the baffles are spaced and how many baffles you cram in there. Um, and that is, I would say that's almost literally impossible to make predictions on without computer modeling. Um, but, but yes, yeah, so basically any, and, and you know, and kind of the funny thing, I, don't, I really don't want to get too far off into this because I'm really not a technical expert. Oh, that's fine. Uh, no, but, I was just curious of what, you know, what you, F from the from being in sales and what you're... A lot of it is fluid dynamics yep. and, and hydrodynamics, which is theory. It's not necessarily a... a you know, you're in, you know this sort yeah. of stuff. It, it is theory. It, yeah. You're right. It is th there it, are... it, it's a theory. So, the, you know, the model gets us, yeah. you know, close enough. And then literally it's a labor-intensive process of, of trial and error, trial and error. Build yeah, there are approximate solutions to a very complex mm -hmm. problem. The closed form solution would be too, too difficult to model. Absolutely. And um, that's true. Uh, but they, they do, they break out all the stops. So, so, so they're, they're doing a lot of front end engineering work then. And then when they, when they, you know, when they come up with some options that they think are viable, do you guys have like a testing department and another arm of your R and D where they start prototyping and then they we have do. a range and stuff? We do. Or? Absolutely. Okay. So there, there's actually a machine shop that the R that like, here's the R and D laboratory. Okay. Right. You walk out the door of the R and D laboratory and they have about a, you know, a, a pretty what would be a good size machine shop anywhere else and okay. it's and it's literally just the R&D laboratory and that's where a cool. lot of the senior machinists that do you know do a lot of uh, setups and things like that they're really good at you know one offs and running one little component at a time you'll go out the last time I was actually at the factory I was so impressed by this one of our engineers who I have just immense respect for his name Jake Turnblom he was also a marine he was literally out there on the floor at a machine building baffles for a new product one baffle at a time cool on a machine you know this guy yeah you know he he's prototyping that's yeah, awesome and, no, and, and it's just so fascinating to me and i was proud you know it made me again proud to work for the company someone like 
that's how we roll. You know, it is like cool I, to see in-house manufacturing of yeah. designs that are done in-house too. And I know so, several people, it, you know, it depends where you are, right, in your, in your comfort level. Some companies, they, they do only the designs and they outsource the manufacturing. Um, some do both. Some license designs from other manufacturers mm -hmm. and, and then do the, only the manufacturing themselves. Some, I think, might even license from other manufacturers and have the des design manufactured uh, out of someone else. And so there's all kinds of different ways to do it. Across the whole spectrum. But, um, we do it the hardest way possible. Yeah, you do. But, you definitely have it integrated. It's a truly vertically integrated company. Yeah. And there are very few companies in the industry mm -hmm. that do that. Um, that's, it's interesting. And to speak more about testing, so you, you we, hear... We do oh. have a range. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, no, go ahead. Yeah. No, they do have the, the R&D. Yeah. So it, it's a, the dungeon, basically. You go down there and it's a full range. And I mean, we take care of the guys down there pretty good, but they're down there shooting. And you call shooting it the dungeon? And shooting. That's awesome. I, I call it that. You call it? Yeah. I, would, I would call it that too. Uh, <laughs> and, and you go in there and honestly, the, the collection, the firearms collection in there is pretty impressive because yeah. the hosts, I mean, we use oh, any yeah. kind of host and I mean, for all these silencers and we take it to the limit of, and, and we actually exceed the limitations. Like there's nothing that we build that we don't just absolutely annihilate and find where is that where's line. the limit that's mm -hmm. i was going to ask about that because you know you hear a lot of talk about full auto rating and belt fed rating and things are there do you do you know uh, specifically about it, the, the rating standards they do for full auto like let's say in your what, like what's one of your super durable rifle cans the so the Omega, the, the most durable rifle can is the Chimera and then the Saker series. Yeah, so the, the Saker and the Chimera or something, like what kind of, do you know the firing schedule they test that to? Except we burn barrels up, I know that. Okay, and, and, you're popping and, gas tubes, yeah, I guess. And there is no, as far as I know, I don't know that there is an industry standard called full auto rating because I know there's a lot of people that say this just full auto rated and it's, you know, and the Omega is significantly stronger than it. Um, the, but they, they just basically get them glowing red hot until they just completely fall apart and whatever that takes, you know. Okay. Uh, I mean, just minutes of sustained fire, basically. Because I know there's the SOCOM firing schedule where it's like you got a bunch of mags loaded and, you, you know, you have that, a certain duration of semi so that, and, that's and then what full we, and semi. Definitely, th that's the standard that they, that they shoot for. But we, it's not even, that's really not an acceptable standard for us. Because okay. we know that people are going to abuse this stuff. So, I mean, you know what's interesting? We it, blow it literally so far beyond anything that any rational person would think is necessary. We were having a conversation yesterday about just how over-engineered our products are and how much money we as a company could save. You know, it's kind of the golden age of silencers right now because these products are so robust and so well-engineered and, oh, and 10 years from now, it's probably gonna be a much more refined, you know, yes. like they're gonna be shaving, you know, tenths of ounces where they can. Whereas nowadays we're like, you know yeah. what? put the material on it, make it as tough as it can possibly be, and, and, and send it out there. Yeah, and, I, and it's awesome. That, that reminds me of two points. The first one is that, and I've heard this from manufacturers before, I heard it a long time ago, and I'm, I'm, I definitely believe it now. I feel like consumers are harder on their silencers than the military folks, because oh. there's way more volume of shots. It is, and they're... And they're doing crazy stuff with they're them. They're doing crazy stuff. <laughs> they're yeah. mag dumping all the time. Well, I mean, we do that because it's cool. Well, I mean, it's fun. So my Omega, for example, I had I got a white Omega, uh, the new with this raw finish on it, and yeah. I wanted to discolor it. Literally, the very first thing I did with that silencer when I took it out of the box was, do, <laughs> was did 18 mag dumps through an SBR. <laughs> I had I had a whole ammo can loaded up, and yeah. I just pulled, and it worked. It discolored the silencer. Cool. But I mean, that's just you know. <laughs> It's really outside the manufacturer's recommendation, too, of what you should do with that silencer. But, it, I mean, that just could The Omega has a Stellite Blast Baffle. Oh, yeah. The Omega so, is I mean, it's fine. rock solid. It, yeah. You know, people who think the Omega is a light-duty can haven't spent much time with an Omega. You know, it's weird. It's, uh, I don't, I don't want to get... I can burn some barrels up with an Omega. I, I don't want to get too... Like, I don't, I, mean, get, I, don't I don't want to get into politics or anything, but well, I will no, say no, the Omega is a good can. And, Omega's and a lot of people talk... The best can talk, in history. I mean, talk a lot of shit about the Omega... And um, it's, it's, a, it's, a really, it's a really good silencer. It's an amazing silencer. It, it's light. Um, it, you know, it has an outer sleeve tube that I guess it's you, got you don't a titanium even... titanium outer sleeve tube. You don't need that, but whatever. But, you know, there's some things about it that can be improved. And it's an old can. And Silencer Co. continues to innovate. Mm -hmm. But I will say that it's no slouch. You know, and you brought up my other, other point I was going to make. And it's kind of, kind of along those lines is... We're in the damn golden age of silencers. We are. People don't understand. It's, it's never been a better time to be a consumer. There was a, there was a time, and I wish, 
and I know some people listening to this remember this, but there was a time when, when you when you could get, and pardon our audience has got to pardon us right now because there's uh, we're in a public place, but people are having a blast here in India at the show, um, so it might be a little loud, but we'll give this one second. Okay, they're gone. So um, people are going to remember a time when we were chasing hearing safe nine millimeter on pistols, you know, it, and 45, I mean, 45 has just now gotten like, you know, you look at cans like the rugged obsidian, which has a lot of, you know, older SWR and silencer code technology in it. Um, you know, before those cans, it was hard to find a pistol that, you know, really wowed a new silencer shooter, for example, on a center fire gun. Now you can go to all these manufacturers. We have spooky quiet 22 i mean it's crazy the switchback is crazy it's so quiet you have cans frank cans from bowers and you know ac and q and dead air all these things i mean it it's so crazy it's almost morphed the shopping experience so now you have customers looking and and seeing instead of just shopping for sound they're shopping for mount types and so much so that now the Omega standard female thread pitch on the mount, now there's there's third party mounts and people are like, well, I don't want to buy a, this rifle sponsor because I can't use all my other freaking mount brands. I'm like, dude, you don't know how good you have it. It's a given the can's going to be quiet and hearing safe. It's so damn quiet. I mean, pick a, pick a rifle sponsor. I agree. I Just agree. pick one. And honestly, I, I love all these guys and all these brands. And I think, I think a lot of the products are great. And it is amazing the options that are out there for the end user and yeah. the sales channels full there's inventory out there nothing is priced at full msrp i mean we're coming into the summer season where sales are usually slow so there's going to be a lot of deals out there and i mean the products are so good now consumers are well educated and and they have the internet so you will not survive as a manufacturer if you put bad product into the marketplace you will not last and, and so yeah. there, there's really nobody out there that's just making whack product that's not going to be any good or they won't last they just won't the consumers are too discerning nowadays they won't stand for it and and it's an investment it's a lifetime investment basically yeah customer service becomes almost i wouldn't say it's the most important thing because i think performance is always going to be at the top mm -hmm. performance is always going to be at the top for users especially with the investment the time and the monetary investment people are putting forth for these items but i will say customer service in my opinion this is from my observation just having i've, I've broken silencers I mean, you know, you can break anything if you try hard enough. They break. And um, customer service, without that, you're kind of up shit creek. Totally. You're made to that product for life. That, that's yeah. What, that's what we say. Mm -hmm. that, Silent Trico does an amazing job with that. We have a very robust customer service department, and they work their butts off. Yeah. It's a team of, of about six or seven guys and girls, and they are constantly on the phones. They'll field a thousand queries a day. You know, it, yeah. during, during busy season or during, you know, when stuff's going on. And it's, uh, I mean, we take care of folks. And honestly, that's how Sandra was able to capture a lot of market share really quickly, was we built, we made a commitment to customer service. It's one of the pillars of the company, customer service. And you have to take care of people. And it costs a lot of money to take care of people, too. It we, does. We spend a lot of money. You know, it's free. So if something goes wrong with your silencer, it's fixed. We fix it. Yeah, there's a lifetime warranty on silencer it, products, it's right? It's done. We, we call it an eternal warranty. Yeah. It, it doesn't matter how long you live. It matters how long that serial number exists. Oh, so is it, like, let's say, so, so a, lot of people don't, a lot of people don't sell silencers after they buy them, but you can. So if I transfer, like say I buy, a, I buy a switchback and I transfer it to my buddy, you know, he pays the tax to form for it to him. Still the same warranty? It's the serial number that's okay. warrantied. Cool. So it's not a lifetime. It's an eternal warranty. That's and awesome. And that commitment to the customer right there means a lot. <laughs> no, it's and, tremendous. And, and it gives me, yeah. as, a, as a sales guy, a lot of clout. I feel good when I walk into a dealer because I know they're going to have multiple stories of wow, this is the time your customer service department really helped sure. me out. I made a mistake and did this and we screwed this up and y'all fixed it and thank you. And I'm like, uh, yeah, I will that's say, a wonderful story. And it just makes you feel good. It's better than yeah. when you're out in the field and they're like, hey man, where's my free can? <laughs> you, know, you know, you have the bad conversation there. So it's, it's our customer service department makes my life so much easier uh, because of their, their commitment. You know, and, uh, Jay Stam is the manager of customer service and uh, Tyler Rocky is the lead customer service technician. We got Quentin Mount. Um, I mean, these guys work 
I mean, hard all day, every day, and it's not an easy job. It's a very demanding job, and they have to maintain a high level of professionalism. And everybody they talk to is having a problem, and they're not always just the most cordial individuals. Um, That's and right. Our, and our customer service team just day in, day out, shows up and does their job. And I'm, I, I love, I love those guys. I'm, I'm so proud of them. And they, they make, they make our company. You know, marketing is obviously the face of the company, but the people that get that interact with the most is the customer service team. No component of our company interacts more with the public than our customer service team. I will say that, um, you know, we talk about performance being number one for silencers and, and customer service, in many people's opinion, being a close second. Um, there are, you know, there are silencer manufacturers out there that are, I mean, I guess to the industry and to the general public that is in this kind of this market, those people are known for having poor customer service. And, and sometimes, you know, I'll see people asking, well, what do you think about this can? And, you know, people, oh, it's great. I love mine or blah, blah, blah. But then someone will chime in and say, well, um, they never fix this. They never answer the phone this. They've never done this. It's devastating. And, and, and you see that and you're like, it's damn, I, I hope that didn't sour them to the whole experience. And you, you, you try to steer people to the right thing, you know, as best you can. And it's good that companies are realizing the customer service is important. Um, it is good. It, yeah. It's good for the consumer. Now is a great time to be a consumer. And really, any of these companies that are still around, they're realizing, oh, we have to make a commitment to customer service. And, and if they don't, they're not going to last. What are, like, speaking of that, what's your, I guess, what's your opinion of the overall silencer industry at this time? We've covered a lot of it, but like, I don't know, what, like, what's your feeling of how it's going? Like, with all the different companies and like, do you have any special well, takes? I made a comment to a close friend of mine yesterday who owns a, a company, a silencer company, and he, they're a well-established company, been around over a decade. And we were walking by and we saw about three different new silencer manufacturers within about a 300 foot walk. And I just thought to myself, wow, you know, good luck gentlemen. The, the market's growing so quick and it's still a very fast growing market. Very saturated. It's still, well, yeah. I, don't, we, I don't know that we've saturated it yet. Really? Okay. You know, like we, we estimate that we've only penetrated about 9% of the market. So there is a place for these new manufacturers. Okay. They're just going to have to hit it and hit it hard. Um, okay. But again, that, that's good for the end user. And, and I've seen a few new companies come online and actually make some waves. Uh, Texas Silencer Company has done that. Revolutionary Suppressors has done that. Okay. These are both brand new, not brand new, but just a couple year old companies. Dead Air is not that old a company, you know, five, five years old or so. Five, they five, had a little head old. start though. Well, they did, <laughs> and honestly, they're, they, I don't really, they don't really fall into that category. Yeah, yeah, all. they, but, I mean, they got Pappas yeah, and McGee, I mean. Yeah, by stretch, but there are newer yeah. companies with like people that you don't know, and they're yeah. starting up and making a run at it. Um, but the, uh, obviously the majority of the sales are going to these more well-established brands. The market in general, like I said, it's, it's a buyer's market right now. Never been a better time to buy. It feels good. Um, you know, the one thing we could get help from, from the government if they could ease the regulatory burden, I, I wonder what that would look like for the market. You know, it would just, I'm very curious what that would do. I mean, I'm not necessarily curious. We all know it would blow up, but yeah. But, you know, and, and, and how do we get there, right? We, mm -hmm. have, we, have, we have lobbying organizations, you know, people can directly contact their representatives and let them know, hey, I'm frustrated with the burden placed on me, with the unnecessary burden placed on me, Yeah. you know, by the, by the ATF. It's really, it's unreasonable. There's, nobody thinks it's rational. In any other industry, hearing protection would be a requirement. Yeah. Um, the industry in, right now, I think it has a really good feel to it because we all, all of us know each other. I don't know if you know you come by the silencer shop yeah. booth and you've got four or five different manufacturers there and some of we're close, all the reps are close. We all know Isn't each other. It cool? They work for different companies. Yeah. It is cool. It's a wonderful feeling. It's you know, like I said, we come here to see our friends. That's the cool thing about coming to these shows. Yeah. And and it's awesome to see your friends do well. It, it, you yeah. always feel good to, to watch your friends do well and the industry just has a good feel to it. And I think uh, there's been some animosity uh, in the past, and, and I really feel like the guys, you know, like me, kind of in my peer group that are kind of moving up in, in sales and marketing and things like that, we've really made a commitment to just establish strong relationships with each other and maintain those relationships. And it's really starting to show, yeah, even man. on the forums, you're seeing just a lack of resentment, a lack of bitter conversation, a lack of That's true. attack of each other. That tone is changing. And, and it's been a concerted effort 
that we will go out, we'll hang out as manufacturers, we'll all get yeah. together doing our thing. And we're like, hey man, this is unreasonable. It's bad for the end user. We need to, yeah. you know, our real relationship isn't bad. You know, let's let's have that professional, uh, rep, re, be, let's have that personal, good personal relationship be, be reflected in our professional lives. And it's, and, and honestly, the tone online is changing to me. and. I, that's something that I really appreciate. I don't. I'm not a mean, nasty person. I want to yeah. be around. I want to build people up. I want to be around good. Roger that, man. And, yeah. And so that to me is is an exciting. And it's kind of a, it's kind of an ethereal. It's kind of an out there type of thing. But to me, it it matters to me. It affects my life. And and it, yeah. And I just think it's good for the end user whenever they enter into these forums and they're brand new, and and they're not just immediately met with just all this. You know, just bad, bad commentary. Yeah, you could you know. turn off a. You could definitely turn off a new buyer. You know, if. Yeah, the silencer world is dramatic. That has been in the past. It continues to be. It does. Rel relatively dramatic on the internet. I would say on the internet. I would have to qualify it because really, yeah. if people understood, like you know, they go to the. That's everybody's access point. Yeah, if it. you go to the if you go to the shows, if you go to shot, you can go to NRA. And you go to other things and you see folks, they act a lot different in person. Well, they're all hanging out with each other and they're all... It's a lot different, right? And, and then you, you yeah. go online and then people hide behind keyboards and they say all kinds of things. But um, but that tone anyway. is getting softer. It is softer. And, it's and definitely changed. It is changing. Yeah. And I think that's pleasant. It's cool. It is cool. And, uh, you know, so if we could get the regulatory burden eased, however we can do that, whether it's, you yeah. know, individuals contacting their representatives, whether it's some of these lobbying organizations yeah. like the American Suppressor Association trying to do good work or... Uh, you know, Liberty Alliance, or there's several organizations out there, the NRA, um, yeah. you know, and, and, but again, I don't know, I'm not a lobbyist, I'm not a professional lobbyist or anything like that, but I, I like to support them and I hope they can make inroads, but at the end of the day, I think it's really up to the end, you, it's up to us as consumers to make our voices heard. I think voting in your local elections, talking to your representatives mm -hmm. about the, the laws, about the, the the regulations, um, keeping that local voice. I mean, it all Squeaky you know it all starts. That's how our society works. It, I mean, it's 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 unbelievably corrupt at all levels, and we have to try our best to. I don't really have a solution uh, other than just, that, other than be trying active, our best. Maintain a positive attitude. Yeah. Be active wherever you see an access point where you think you can make a difference. Just have the yeah. conversation. Absolutely. Um, let them know, and that, I think that could make as big of a difference as anything. Yeah. Um, Absolutely, I, I agree. I, I wanted, real quick, I wanted to talk about something because you're, I wanted to talk about silencers for hunting real quick because you, you're on uh, Pulsar Night Vision Pro Staff with me. That's kind of how, I, I mean, I, I met you um, at the last NRA, but mm -hmm. I think, you know, we became closer doing Pulsar stuff. Um, you know, so we both both use, you know, night vision or thermal optics at night to, to hunt. Love it. And, and, and silencers because you have to. Um, do you have any like opinions to share with consumers about maybe some of your favorite silencer co silencers to use for hunting especially like the are there omega. any special products the omega okay the omega is king it's quiet it's short it's light you can burn it down it's not going to blow up uh, you know at nighttime one of the main advantages of using silencers you know flash reduction especially if you're running right. digital night vision you know it'll overwhelm those sensors really quickly right uh, a lot of time with you know the type of hunting we do varmint hunting calling up predators hunting pigs it's a very dynamic environment especially with your friends there's a lot of shooting and moving you need to be able to communicate yeah shooting multiple shooters for sure becomes extraordinarily dangerous very quickly if you cannot communicate the silencer is going to give you that ability to communicate and a lot of times, I mean, honestly, when you're out there, you're introducing people to the sport. We're not dealing with like seasoned pros that are used to just shooting, moving, and communicating. It's easier said than done. You know, it's not ingrained in them. And and the silencers, they soften the experience for new shooters. Um, you know, and there's obvious tactical advantages. You know, faster follow-on shots. You're not going to scare the animals off as bad. Um, you, you know, they may be disoriented when they do run. Yep. Uh, you, you know, you're gonna you're gonna get a little more time on target. You know, to, to prosecute more more targets, uh, and and honestly, just safety. Being able to communicate, hunting at nighttime, hu calling predators, calling varmints, hunting pigs, driving around in vehicles. You're tired. It's night. You're on property you're not familiar with. It's extraordinarily dangerous. And the silencers allow you to have a safer experience. They really do. They put the muzzle of your gun just a little bit farther out there. That's so right. When you're sweeping left and right, you know you may, you know. That's right. I mean, it, there's so many safety uh, advantages 
involved with hunting. And, and honestly, in, in my opinion, it's the silencers do more to help safety for nighttime hunting than, than and the tactical advantages are amazing. They're, they're great. But I, I'm, a, I'm a very safety oriented person. I just am. I've, I've, I've had a bunch of dangerous jobs in my life and I literally would not be alive right now if, if I wasn't just a very safety conscious person. And, you know, I, I run the Omega at nighttime. And, uh, cool. And uh, the Harvester's fun to run too. You know, it's, it's an 11 ounce uh, silencer. One of our pro staffers actually, one of the Pulsar pro staffers, he, the first thermal video I ever saw of a harvester or of a silencer being shot and warming up which uh -huh. is a cool shot you, yeah. you posted some cool videos like that yeah they're was cool with the harvester he had a harvester oh, cool. on AR okay and, and he was boom 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 out there shooting heating it up and I just reached out to him I was like oh wow okay. that's a cool video you know cool. what's up who are you what's the deal and I ended up actually you know meeting him at some demos and, and you know kind of becoming friends but uh cool yeah silencers add a lot to the to the experience especially uh, for nighttime hunting, for hunting in groups, for shooting and moving, you know, if you're in a dynamic situation, the silencers are going to help, help a lot. Yeah, um, I agree. I, uh, one of the things um, I did this past year that I had never done before was I hunted white-tailed deer with a Silence 308 bolt action. Um, not because I couldn't before equipment-wise, but because Texas didn't allow the use for a long time. And, and they, they've now opened up um, game animals. Land management. Yeah, g yeah, game animals can now, all, all game animals can be um, shot with silencers, which is a huge step forward in, in the Texas hunting laws and the regulations. Um, not like, you know, usually if I, in the past, what I would do is I'd have my, you know, my Howard Light uh, electronic earmuffs on and I'd crank up the, the, uh, the amplification so I could kind of hear my surroundings because I really like to hear my surroundings. Even when I'm hunting, I hunt alone a lot. Um, so when I hunt alone, I really want to be aware of what's going on. I want to hear animals and having those off of my head, no ears on with the bolt action 308. I have my, I have my rugged surge on there and hearing the impact of the round through a big buck at a hundred yards was like the craziest most surreal experience ever and it just it, i i don't want to get too corny but it felt it was magical man it was like it was like a very like you know you remember you killed your you killed your first large well, I'm mammal i'm smiling right now because i know the exact <laughs> sensation that you experienced yeah and I, I and and again being able to hear that sound whenever you head shoot a doe and yeah you hear that crack and, and, you know when you it makes it ears. so much more intimate I, I that might sound morbid to some folks that haven't hunted before or haven't you know taken the animal's life but you know you're thankful for the life you take when you take it and you use the meat and b being able to hear it naturally i don't know man not having to wear ears be more situationally aware mm -hmm. more intimate with the animal it almost feels i i feel like i can put forth my respect more. I don't know if that makes sense. That might be talking crazy. No, it does make sense. Um, I'm not gonna go f too far down that rabbit hole because I get carried away <laughs> pretty quickly on <laughs> philosophical stuff. And I, I'm trying to, trying to stay here on earth. But your ears are a huge sensor for your body, right? Yeah, they right are. right next to your brain. And you take in more through your ears than just sound, right? Your whole, your inner ear, the equilibrium, you know, that's an access point to a lot it of is, the man. world that I'm not sure we really understand all that's going on there. But yeah. I totally agree with you. Yeah, being able to hear what's going on mm -hmm. and being able to just, you know, feel the wind on your ears when you're out there. It's cool. It feels good. It, it feels, yeah, it, it definitely enhances, I would say it enhances the hunting experience. And folks that are listening that, you know, maybe you're not super duper gun guys like us, you know, maybe you're just hunters and you use your guns, you know, once or twice a year for, you know, you sight it in and then you go, <laughs> do your thing you should check, check them out check out check out some lightweight silencers for your hunting um i just got a couple more questions for you i think we're doing okay on time pretty good um i was gonna ask what's your i ask i ask this to everyone because as a silencer guy it's like it's something i'm it's like it's that thing i chase what are you some of your favorite host weapons for silencers what are some of the coolest guns that you like to shoot with silencers that operate the best and sound the best I love my MP5. 
I have a Zenith. Uh, oh, you have an MP5 clone. Yes, awesome. I love it. It's it's incredible. What is it the K or is it the full it's, size? It's a K. It's a, a, a ZP5 RS. Do you uh, have a do you have a pistol brace or a stock? I have a pistol brace. Nice. And I I love it. I carry it for personal defense. That that's my my gun. And and I have a the Omega 9K with a three lug mount on there. Nice. And right nice now, deep tone. It's amazing. The Omega 9K for a, a four inch, seven ounce silencer, yeah. it's amazing. It's and cool. then that's baffle geometry. That's a testament to what you can do with baffle geometry. And yeah. a tubeless, you know, four and a half inch. Yeah, it's tubeless. Seven it's, is it is it seventeen four steel? I can't remember. Yes. Okay. Um, but, it, but it's just it's just amazing. Uh, but that so that on an MP5 with a three lug mount, about the coolest thing out there. Um, I, I I like shooting the bolt guns. Obviously, I mean, just to, honestly, just a Remington seven hundred with the Omega on it. Mix 308, a lot of fun to shoot. It, yeah, it, man, bolt really gun cool. 308 silences. I badass. The, when I, for several months, now this has been a while, but for several months, my favorite thing to shoot suppressed was a uh, 300 Win Mag. I just couldn't. I haven't done it yet. How awesome it was shooting a 300 Win Mag with the harvester on there, an 11 mm. ounce silencer on the end of your 300 Win Mag, no hearing protection, no bruised shoulders, and. 300 wind mag's fun to shoot because you can shoot the stuff really far away with it. And you know, when you're not having to pay the piper on every shot, if you have the silencer on there, you actually get to like truly enjoy that experience. You're motivating me, man, um, because I don't have one yet. I don't dude, have a 300 wind mag. It's, dude, it, it, 308 <laughs> is fun, 300 wind mag reach, it, it's, okay. it's, it's, it's fun. And so the last deer I shot was with 300 wind mag. And I mean, I'm, oh, really? I'm hooked. White tail? Yeah, about a, okay. about a, like a, she dressed out at like 70 pounds. It was a, it was a management animal on a, on a, on a game ranch okay. and I was helping them. But, uh, so would you use like 300 mag? So you like a shoulder shot or? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, but it's cool. just 300 mag is a fun That's gun awesome. to shoot. I like, I'll shoot anything I can with a 300 wind mag. I want to get a 300 wind mag gas gun. That's my next, but that's several 300 wind mag on. gas gun. Are those, th does that fit into the AR 10 frame? Oh God, no! No, it's, no, it, it, it's how radical. do you even? I didn't even know no, they. Nemo. There, oh, there's badass. a couple manufacturers out there. Uh, hmm. Nemo's doing a good job with them. I haven't. I guess I haven't even. I haven't they're even held here. one of those in person. Oh, they're radical, and I just love the idea of like being able to shoot through some masonry and have some AR ergonomics. You know? Oh hell yeah! I mean, you know, like literally, well, I that's want why I built an AR ten through an objective. Yeah. It, my new my gun that I just got is a uh, LMT. Um, MWS 308, you know, AR-10 style platform. Awesome. I haven't even shot it yet. Oh man. I have a sight mark uh, pinnacle on it. Oh sweet. And uh, those are nice scopes. I actually this digicite four fit this digicite N550. That's that I right. Just, got just from bought Pulsar it. Is going home and going right on that LMT. Oh, and I'm gonna go gonna traipse sweet. around in the woods by myself like my buddy Jay and shoot some pigs. Sweet. Um, so I <laughs> 300 Win Mag is an awesome platform to shoot suppressed because you actually can enjoy shooting it. Um, honestly, dude, the salvo shooting the shooting the twelve gauge. I still haven't done it, man. It, I have a twelve. I have a short barrel shotgun. It changes the shooter's experience mm. more than any other product we make, and it's just absolutely fascinating that the difference that that salvo makes on a on a shotgun. I got to shoot one at a silencer shop in Austin. I'll I'll get I'll get with Elliot you know, and honest to God, do though, that. my favorite as far as like the most use that I'm getting right now. Uh, my kids and I are roaming around the woods. With a Smith and Wesson, M and P fifteen twenty two using a Gorilla Quiet ammo, running the switchback, and those rounds, uh, you know, with my kids, those yeah. rounds won't actually cycle that gun, so it makes it a lot safer. Like they can cycle around, oh, boom, okay. shoot it, so it turns it into like a. Single so you're teaching fundamentals. You're teaching malfunction oh, drills. You're teaching no. all kinds of stuff. Yeah, <laughs> but I mean, it's just a lot safer for my for my for my seven and, and nine year old sons. That's uh, great to man. walk around, you know, instead of being able to just crack off rounds. You that know, is like so awesome. One little round, you know, I teach them move to underarm assault, you know, use your claw, you know, Hell rack yeah. it back, you know, let it go, you know, let the slide run for it on its own. That's and great. Just teaching them those skills, you know, shoulder the weapon, yeah, man. shoot your one round, and, that, and that's what you get. And, uh, that's so cool. And it's, and we'll spend just hours and hours and hours looking for turtles or leaves or glass bottles or anything i mean it's, it's yeah you i mean you hit the nail on the head with one of the most awesome reasons why silencers are great they're an amazing training. getting young or new shooters into shooting taking away the recoil taking away the muzzle blast the flash mm -hmm. or at least minimizing the recoil but i mean it can make a somewhat 
more timid person or someone not familiar with firearms just mm -hmm. like really open up and concentrate on fundamentals and and not be scared off 100 percent. i think you know that's how we're going to grow the industry like yeah. you, you don't have to sell a silencer to me but you got to sell a yeah. silencer to that young man or woman across the street who may have not grown up in the industry and they may not even know that they like the stuff yeah and you know the concussion the noise the all of that it can be an overwhelming experience for a lot of people especially like modern people that don't live intense lives or, yeah or push their boundaries you know sensory overload is a, is a very real thing for a lot of people and that, that yeah, can man. push people away okay i think i got um we're doing pretty good on time i think yeah we're almost an hour so i've got one more question okay. man okay um what is your favorite silencer manufactured by someone else what is my favorite silencer manufactured by somebody else? Well, so the Knight's Armament, you know, CAC 14 or whatever that is that we're all running in Iraq. Okay. I mean, that, that's pretty cool. You're but pretty it, intimate with it. Yeah, and I mean, it's it, it's old. Uh, honestly, I like I like the Wolverine. I think it's cool. It's so cool. <laughs> part of that is <laughs> I like AKs. Yeah. And I like Pappas and I, you know so that's that's a big part of that too and it, it is just a cool silencer I don't I don't own one um, I I like Griffin armament I like what Evan and Austin Green stand for okay and I think uh, they do a good job and I, I think the products look good uh, if I had to pick a favorite silencer though that wasn't made by silencer Co um, can I go with the integrals you can go with anything you oh, want I man. love the uh, so the integrals Right now, the rise of the integrals, any of the, any of the integrally suppressed 22s with about 18 inches of baffles in them. I mean, how is that? I mean, those fun? are great. I, uh, you know, it's interesting. Oh, so, okay. Well, let me get a little specific then. When you talk integral, are you talking about guns that have an integrally suppressed baffle stack so it's part of the barrel? Or are you talking about guns that have the same thing, but also have holes in the barrel to port velocity to make it slower and quieter? Yeah. Or both. <laughs> yeah, both. But more just the little okay. bolt action 22s okay. that are out there that are integrally suppressed, or some of the the, uh, in, the newer integrally suppressed. And it makes them a one stamp gun. 300 blank outs. Yeah. yeah. Super cool. But you know, like the cool stuff comes out, like like the Wolverine, just pretty cool. Uh, Griffin just launched the Explorer series. I know, just tested first those. Six five can. I mean, it's yeah. pretty cool. It's a tubeless 6.5 can. They're light. I, I'll be honest. I, I'm impressed by innovation. I'm impressed by, you know, people that just kind of put put themselves out there. Um, and I, I, I don't know. I'm I'm easy. I, I kind of like them all. I tell people I, I love Red Rider BB guns. I love bazookas. <laughs> like anywhere in between. Okay. Um, but yeah, there's there's some, there's there's some cool stuff out there that you can't help help but like. Cool, man. And honestly, I I've been debating. I'm like, man, I need to branch out, and I'm and I'm trying to figure out what is my first silencer, not silencer co going to be. And I don't know. I I don't know yet. I'm still. You know, it's interesting. Maybe it's you wait so hard. wait this, with, wait till this year's over. I think there's some. I have a feel. This is my prediction. My prediction is five five six cans that are actually quiet. <laughs> well, I mean, I shot the new YHM Turbo K. It's pretty mm -hmm. badass. The, yeah. the original Turbo is cool too, but I think I think we're going to see some five, five, six cans from some major manufacturers relatively soon. Well, there's uh, major manufacturers out there that still have incomplete product lines. That's right. And so they that's better, why I think I mean, they're going to yeah, fill those yeah. holes. I think they better do something. I, I, yeah. I think that people are waiting because they want to see, and then they're like, okay, now we'll do it. But no one wants to like jump in yeah, right now. I totally agree. But okay, man, this is great. I think we spent about an hour. I think the listeners kind of got some good info, and I really appreciate your time, buddy. It's been a pleasure. Hell yeah! I think uh, we still have another day of this show, so uh, or day and a half. So let's go rock it. I better get back to my appointed place of duty. Yes, sir. <laughs> All right. See you next time, guys.